Good morning. We'll try that again. Good morning. What a great morning it is. And uh, uh, my name is Ron Talton, and I have the privilege to be your liturgist this morning. Uh, I'd like to start out with, uh, first of all, to welcome everyone here, uh, those who come regularly, and if we happen to have any visitors this morning, we want to extend a special welcome to you, and uh, we're just glad you're here, and uh, uh, hopefully that you'll come back sometime to visit us, and uh, if you would, uh, join us in the lounge after the church. Uh, there's some coffee and goodies back there. And then also there's a bag of information, and I think there's some goodies in there, too. So uh, be sure and pick one of those up. Let's uh, continue our service with uh, prayer. Scripture reading. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory, for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. This morning we want to uh, share a little bit with you of uh, one of the things that happened this week on Friday. Our nursery, our, not our nursery, but our preschool uh, students came in for their final uh, of the year preschool uh, celebration, and several of them will move on to kindergarten next year. And so um, it was a privilege to come in and see uh, multiple parents, around 100 family and friends that had gathered, and, and all the students, there was about 28 students, that they finished their year together. There is so much energy in that 
that group of students, and we want to share just a little bit with you this morning of, of what transpired on that Friday. A is for awesome applesauce. I said B is for fun. Big blue bananas. Wait, what is this? C. C. B is for cup. Crazy, crazy cookie. What is this? E. E is for F. Excellent elephant. What is this? F. F is for fun. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 1, verses 21 through 34, a reading from the New Revised Standard Version. They went to Capernaum, where, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. As soon as they left the synagogue, he entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now, Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Here ends the reading of God's Word.
This morning we are talking about uh, something that may seem like, do we, it, it may seem a little foreign to us, or, or maybe we're perfectly well aware that um, regarding a thief in the night. And in John 10, in the Gospel of John in chapter 10, it says, A thief is only there to steal and kill and destroy. I came so they can have real life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. And so today we're going to be talking a little bit about what can come in and destroy and destroy our relationship with Christ or take us off guard when we aren't paying attention. And so we are going to we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning. And so um, we're looking at another part of the Gospel of John that says, but the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. It's a reminder to us um, about how our worship is acceptable to God, that it needs to be be part of um, worshiping in the spirit and in truth. And so the thief that... Um, possibly comes in the night, which is the thief sneaks in is why I use that. There's another there's a scripture that talks about that. That's not what we we are in, but the thief is somebody who sneaks into our midst. And we don't always notice. We don't always pay attention because he comes in in a in a strange way. And that is um that is Satan who can be the enemy who comes in and comes into even our churches, comes into our lives in a way that is very much like a thief, not seen, not noticed, and but is so important to our life together that we do notice it, and that we keep our first love first, which is Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so there's different things that show up that are evidence that um, the enemy is brooding about. And there are things that happen within our own lives, that happen in our homes, that happen in our lives, that can happen in the church. And there are things that include things like grumbling and idols and entitlement and complacency and comfort and going through the motions. Those are just some of the ways in which the enemy loves to take residence within us. And if we're not paying attention, can do great damage to us. And you may say, we do not have idols. We do not have idols. We do not have any golden calves sitting on our counters. We do not have them in our church. But idols are things that we begin to put ahead of the Lord. And so we can very well have idols. There can be idols in our our church of things that we're used to and we like them there. And if they get moved or they get changed, then our focus is on that as opposed to being on the Lord. Entitlement is that we, we deserve certain things as opposed to coming in in a space of an attitude of putting God first. And so there's a wonderful scripture uh, that we've talked about before, which says, enter the gates with thanksgiving and enter the courts with praise. And what this means is, as you enter the doors, as you enter that space of a fellowship with God in your homes, if you have private time of worship, as you enter, the very first thing you should be is entering with thanksgiving. As you enter the doors of the church, as you enter, what is your thought process that goes in? Are you entering with thanksgiving? Are you giving God thanks for all that he has done or thanks for the morning or thanks for all the things that you can give him thanks for? Because it tells us to enter his doors, enter the space that we are going to encounter the Lord with thanksgiving. Now, if you are thanking God you are focused on thanking God, and you are not focused on grumbling to God. You are focused on thanking God. It changes you. It is wonderful to give those, those thanksgivings to the Lord, but it does something for your heart. Because it changes you as you're thinking about all the ways that you can be thankful. 
We've heard about many things that we can be thankful for this morning within the life of our church that we can celebrate and be thankful for. But as we enter, are we thinking about thanksgiving and what it is that we can be can put first to give God thanks? The other thing is to enter the courts with praise. Our courts here at Eden UMC is our sanctuary. As we enter our sanctuary, do we enter it with praise? Are we looking to the one who deserves all of our praise and all of our glory and all of our acclamations? Or are we thinking of other things and we forget to praise the one who deserves to be praised? Satan hates praise. Satan does not like too well to have thanksgiving going to the Lord. He tries to steer us in other directions. Because when we're praising God, Satan can't live in those spaces. He doesn't live well in the spaces of great praise when we are praising the Lord. When we are giving praise to the one who has created us, giving praise and glory to the one who can transform us, the one who forgives our sins, the one who sets us free, I'm no longer a slave to fear. He sets us away from fear. And we give him praise because I am a child of God. That is is a a song that we, we sing often in the second service. But it's a good reminder to us that fear is washed away as we praise God and as we claim what the scriptures say, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a child of God. And so when we enter this space, it's important of how we enter. It's important how we worship God. It's important that even if we don't know the words to a song, that we are finding ways in that song to give praise to God. And to focus on the Lord. It's important how we do that. It's important because if we go through the motions, it's an open door for the enemy to move in. It's an open door for the enemy to move in and and fill our hearts with other stuff. Because God doesn't want our emotions. The Lord wants our true spirit and truth. He wants us to worship in that spirit and in that truth, not just to go through the motions. And so it's important as as individuals, as we worship at home, as we go about our days at home, it's important as you gather in the church to enter the courts with praise. This is given to us by the Lord of how he wants us to be and how it is necessary for us to be. It says in the scripture to... um, Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Keep alert. Watch what's happening in your life. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. And so if you're not alert, if your eyes aren't focused on the Lord, the enemy moves in. Peter, our wonderful Peter, boy, he knew he could walk on water if Jesus called him. And he walked on water until he focused his eyes and took his eyes off Jesus and looked at the storm below. And then he sunk. Jesus still rescued him again. So if you're sinking, Jesus is there to rescue you multiple times. But it says discipline yourselves. Be alert. And we need not to only be alert to what happens in our daily lives, but we also need to be alert to the fact that Jesus will come again. And we do not know the time or the day. And so we need to be alert. Another scripture says, again, the devil took him, took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. This was a temptation that was given to Jesus. And so if the enemy feels like he should tempt Jesus, why would he not tempt us? Why would he not set about to tempt us. And Jesus replies to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. That's the word that he gives us today, that that's where our true worship belongs, is to worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So we continually need to check ourselves to see where we are. Have we fallen into stuff that doesn't look too much like the Lord? Have we allowed the enemy to take an opening and move inside? And so we don't look too much like Jesus. And we have gotten comfortable in in where we are. And we forget that 
it, it isn't about us. It is really about our worship that belongs to the Lord. It says, for our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. And so we are, are rising against the spirit of darkness, which is, the, which is the enemy. Jesus is the light in the world. So we're reminded, it's not about... It's, it's something that we might not even see, but it can move in and take over our lives. And so, the scripture that tells us to worship in spirit and truth is so important. Daily, we need to look to the Lord. We need to count our blessings, as it's often said in that old, old hymn, count your blessings and name them one by one. We need to be mindful of where we, what we are worshiping. What are we spending our time on? What are we giving our focus to? Are we truly allowing Jesus to be our Lord and Savior and be number one in our lives? It is so vitally important that we check. Don't leave openings. Don't leave openings for the enemy will try to come in. He will try to come in. The more, the harder you serve and the more you are close to the Lord, the more the enemy tries to knock you apart. Because while he is defeated, he still has great power to, to pull people in the wrong direction. If we want to know what the direction is for our, our church, we need to be on our knees to seek the Lord, to seek him. In your lives, in our church, in all places, I encourage you to be in that space of worship and spirit and truth. Be in that space of seeking Jesus every day, every moment, and every hour for he will not ever fail us. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you so much that you are in all things. You are the light of the world. And indeed, darkness cannot live in you. We know that you have already defeated Satan. He is defeated, and yet he causes great ruckus in our lives and in our world, in our communities, in our churches, until you return. So, Lord, may it be that we focus ourselves on you, that we put you first in the rising up, that we put you first in our, our work, in our play, in our discussions around a table, that we put you first, that our worship becomes true to you, that it is in spirit and in truth. And, Lord, as we fail you, we pray that you forgive us of all of our sins, that you forgive us and that you lead us in your ways. You are an amazing God. And you truly are the light of the world. We pray these things in your most holy name. Amen.